program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, on? Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. I hope everything's well with you. And as you know, what I normally do on an annual basis is that, you know, winter's coming up and, you know, hey, and the whole issue of, of, of health care. I mean, are you taking care of yourself? I mean, you know, there's all sorts of things that we, we need to remind ourselves uh, in this issue. And again, this year, I've got uh, uh, Leslie Cody. Uh, she's a nurse practitioner in North Portland. And she's, she works out of North Portland or whatever. Just happened to be my doctor, too, by the way. And, and I, might, I might want to talk a little bit about the actually my doctor and also my wife's doctor. Mm -hmm. Both. We're both there under her care. And I might add just a point, too. A lot of times people might say, well, gee whiz, why, why would you want to have a female doctor or someone? Like well, I can still remember that uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, uh, you know, uh, whenever you visit uh, uh, visit the, the medical center, this, that, and the other, um, there was always a nurse there, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there was a doctor there, and it seems as though the, the nurse was always taking care of me more than the doctor. <laughs> He'd come and prescribe whatever, and mm -hmm. then she would be the one to do all the other things, if you will. <laughs> and so, so in all due respect, uh, I guess the, the idea is that uh, you find the most competent person, someone that you feel most uh, you feel uh, more comfortable with. I think that's very, very important, if you will because you got to share anything and everything about your background and this, that, and the other, so that, in fact, someone can help you out. So I just want to let you know that um, there's nothing wrong with, with having a female doctor or a male nurse. That's true. They work on both ends mm -hmm. of the deal. The whole bottom line is about your, your care and your health care. So especially when you're getting of age, very, very important. You know, it's almost like a... Like a used vehicle, if you want an old vehicle, if you will, you got to change the oil. You got to, you got to make sure you take the maintenance a little bit more. And a lot of times, you know, those symptoms like like going into and saying change the oil, but there might be some other things there. So if you you got to share a lot of things if, if possible. So anyway, I thought I'd throw that out there on the front end. Though. Again, like I said, this year we're going to do the same thing with Leslie like we did last year, and we're going to talk about anything and everything. Basically, I'll just run down some of the major. Hit, hit topic areas that we're going to be hitting. How can someone who doesn't have insurance get medical attention? That's a good one. How, what are some strategies for medication for those who are uninsured or underinsured? How can I avoid getting sick? What are the most important things to do to avoid getting cancer? Very important. How can I effectively lose weight? Very important. Okay. So those are some of the major topics, and we're going to, we're going to ask Leslie to kind of hit some of the highlights in those respective areas. But before we do that, for you, for you young folks, in fact, mm -hmm. middle-aged folks, or folks that are unemployed, trying mm -hmm. to figure out what am I going to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, you know, it, med the medical profession is quite a career to be looked at, because especially with the whole issue of uh, uh, of the, uh, the, the what was it the the seniors? We got more seniors today. I mean the. the I mean, it's, it's something else. And so people are going to be in need of help. And so the medical profession is quite, it's really a career that you might want to look at if you're unemployed or and like, and especially young folks who are in school trying to figure out where am I going to go? Because in all due respect, you know, nowadays, sure, it's fine getting a college degree, but the bottom line is that where's the work? And until we can resolve some of the political issues that we have on the, on the table at this point in time, you may want to focus on services that are here locally within this country. And the medical profession is huge, okay? And the baby boomers have now gotten older, and they're out there, and trust me, uh, they're in need and care and whatever. So that might be some, a career you might uh, want to consider. And while we're going to do this, before we get into these areas here that, that Les is going to talk about, I thought I'd spend a couple of moments with Welcome, Leslie. Thank you. Appreciate that. And look, let's let's spend a little time about the careers, you know, mm -hmm. in, in your particular career. Maybe you can just talk about yourself. Sure. What what excited you about getting in this particular career? Well, I really wanted to help people. Okay. And help people in a way that you know help them maximize their goals in okay. relationship to their health. And for me, uh, just the nursing profession and being a nurse practitioner allowed me to do that in a way that was mo more holistic. And I really try, I think it's important to think about a person, it's, they're not just their symptoms, mm -hmm. they're a whole uh, collection of, of important components. Their family health, their community health, mm -hmm. um, you know, their, their psychological health. Mm -hmm. And really you have to think about all of those components that make a person unique mm -hmm. when you're planning out what's gonna be their, how they can optimize their, their health. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I got into it. And mm-hmm. for me... And how did you do that? How did you do first, that? you know, in order to be a nurse practitioner, you have mm-hmm. to have a bachelor's of nursing. Okay. And I strongly recommend anyone who's going to get a nursing degree, don't waste your time to get an associate's degree. Just get a bachelor's no, degree. No, go on get the bachelor's degree. There's, you know, talk of it even getting phased out. And there's essentially a glass ceiling for nurses. Um, if they don't have a bachelor's degree, they can only do floor nursing, which is very well, physically four years, demanding. Right, four years, four or five it's years. A, well, associate's degree, they can get it in two, two to years, three, right, right. but they're essentially forced to be a floor nurse their whole life, and nursing's very hard on the body. Mm, yeah. So I think it's better to have a bachelor's degree, keep your options open, and then people can get masters. They could be a clinical nurse specialist. Mm-hmm. They could be a nurse midwife. They could be a nurse practitioner. Mm-hmm. They could go into education. Mm-hmm. There's shortages in all components. Mm-hmm. And as long as they get a bachelor's first, at any time they can go back to school and really maximize their career. Mm-hmm. And nurse managers, there's you know just healthcare administration, so many different career pathways when someone has a bachelor's. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to make a point that you know, I think people, when they're when they're considering um, health care, they feel limited when they imagine, well, how could I be a doctor? You know, how much school that is, how would I ever pay for, you know, four years of college plus medical school plus living during that residency. Really- and it's really important to realize that there are so many other careers that are very economical to get. With an associate's degree, someone could be like a radiology tech, mm-hmm. or a mammographer, mm-hmm. or an MRI specialist, or any of these tech positions that pay really well, mm-hmm. have excellent benefits, and really only a year or two of additional training. And so for less than four years, they may not have a bachelor's, but mm-hmm. they can have a, a, a job that pays you know, $17, $20 an hour. And the field is open. And the the field field is wide open. open. Wide open right now. Wide open. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage all people who are either thinking about going back to school or who are embarking on their um, professional um, education from the start that they consider all of those options. They can go to salary.com and see how different healthcare specialties are paid. Mm -hmm. And then you can really, you know, crunch the numbers and determine well, if I have to go to school for 12 mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. is it really worth that? Mm-hmm. Well, I can you know, make a really good living for just going to school for two years. Wow. It's a great option. Wow. And what about resources? Where, where, where can we get the information then? Well, as I said, Google salary.com. Com. Salary.com. And you know, there are lots of um, programs like Concordia, okay. um, Beards. They've got you know, different um, Apollo, these different colleges that are um, more specialized, specialized mm-hmm. um, for tech positions. Um, massage therapist, all of these mm-hmm. um, different programs have colleges throughout Portland and then in the other cities. So the phone book, yellow pages. The phone uh, book. On there's Google. a special special section in the phone book that has a blue uh, border, which is all the schools and mm-hmm. um, the Google. You can um, find links to all of those professions and professional associations to find the closest um, educational program to your geographic lo- location. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully, you young folks out there are listening to what Cody is Leslie no is saying and uh, maybe take advantage of those situations because I tell you, it's tough out there right now and mm-hmm. and. Uh, I, you know, I realize there there are other there are other careers, if you will, that mm-hmm. one can follow. But this is a guaranteed one. Trust me. Right. Especially right. with the baby boomers. Situation. Right. Everyone's getting older, and yes. people are staying older longer. Yes. And so the demands on the healthcare profession is only increasing. Yes. Yes. There will always be money set aside for that. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get right up into uh, what you what you bring to the table today to try to help us out a little bit, especially for those uh, who are looking for uh, for medical care. You don't have any insurance and whatever. What do you do? So, Leslie, let's well, go Well, there on. are a couple of different resources um, as far as for... Um, being seen, like an office visit. Mm-hmm. Um, there are 13 different community clinics, and you can go to www.coalitionclinics.org to find your local um, community clinic. Mm-hmm. And those have um, either sliding scale or reduced rates or, or free clinics, depends on your income for qualifying. And um, for example, the actually, unfortunately, people just missed the African American Coalition had a really big health fair no, um, on Friday and Saturday mm. with um, free preventative exams, blood pressure, blood test, diabetes screening, mm-hmm. um, even dental care. Yes, I saw so that. That happens. That there. happens annually, but other clinics or free resources, health fairs are usually available. And then there are county clinics. Mm -hmm. Uh, For example, Multnomah County, people could get vaccinations. So say, for example, your children are uninsured or, you know, you're a teenager and Mm -hmm. you need 
vac vaccinations, you can get them at the county clinic. They also have STD clinics at the county clinic. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, get the free screening or uh, care. If you do have like mm -hmm. chlamydia or gonorrhea, you can mm -hmm. get medical care then. And Planned Parenthood is always a great resource uh, mm -hmm. for any contraception, for pap smears, STD um, treatment and screening, mm -hmm. and birth control mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. So um, there is OHSU Center for Women Health Campaign to End Cervical Cancer. Okay, and that's, that's huge now. It's that to is. That's huge now. And I just found out about this. I was really excited. Mm -hmm. They have... Um, free pap smears, free breast exams, mm -hmm. and they have uh, uh, just essentially a free annual preventative care visit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their number is 503-346-1212. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh. And you can also, at any oh. time, dial 211. Mm -hmm. It's essentially like 411, but for um, finding out what resources are available in general. Mm -hmm. And um, there's also a dental access program. That's a huge, That's huge. concern. A lot mm -hmm. of people have medical care, mm -hmm. but no dental insurance. Mm -hmm. And dental health is very important for your overall and health. Not, and not knowing where to go. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing in that same area I was thinking about, you know, the, the whole issue of prostate mm -hmm. cancer is huge, too. Exactly. You know what I mean? What do you do about that piece? I noticed that they came out just, just recently and said yes. the test now all of a sudden could actually uh, promote, if you will, mm -hmm. prostate cancer, right? Well, essentially, I think that they, they feel that it's being over-screened, over -screened. that people get alarmed when they have PSA um, numbers that come back high, mm -hmm. and it's um, essentially instigating more aggressive treatment for a cancer that's very unlikely to kill someone. Mm -hmm. It's a very insidious, slow-acting cancer. And so part of it is, um, why are we putting all of this money into these tests and money into <laughs> Um, biopsies and TERPs and all of these procedures that are done when essentially it's a cancer that very rarely is going to be the cause of death anyway. You know, as a rule, a lot of times people tend to get a little embarrassed when you start talking about prostate cancer right. and they don't they don't catch it on the front end, you know, the right. preventive kind of a situation. Right. Any, 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 any thoughts or anything you can say to them about how well, to the male especially, right. what do they need to do? What, what, are, the, what are some of the symptoms, if you will? In the, well, um, a lot of times they wouldn't necessarily have symptoms. Okay. Um, men can have prostate symptoms and it's not cancer, mm. um, where they have frequent urination mm -hmm. or urinary hesitancy or um, the, you know, the stream is not as strong, mm -hmm. but that can just be an enlarged prostate, which is not cancer. Mm -hmm. But I really want to take this opportunity, now that we're talking about things yeah, that right, are right. embarrassing, yes. testicular cancer is even more concerning. What is, what is that? Well, testicular cancer is actually fairly common in young men, mm. 20s and 30 year olds, who rarely come to see me. Mm. And they don't realize that they need to do a monthly testicular self-exam. Oh, really? It's extremely important. You have to ask for that test? No, they do it themselves. They do it themselves. They do it themselves. Oh, wow. yeah. They don't need to be seen on a they monthly be basis. Seen on a monthly no, basis. no, they do it but themselves. But do you have to ask for the? We use that in terms of the instructions, in terms of how you do, do it. No, doing it. no, it. They just um, all <laughs> men, it, you know, particularly younger men, need to do a monthly testicular exam. Normal testicles should feel like hard-boiled eggs. Okay. They need to go around every surface of the testicle. Okay. If they feel any hard lumps or irregularities okay. Okay. or just malformed, then they need they need to be seen right away. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's quick, easy um, screening exam that all men should be doing on a monthly basis. Well, I tell you, they need to get that in schools. I mean, are, are they doing it's, anything? Well, that's the problem. Testicular cancer is actually very good outcomes when it's caught early on, mm -hmm. but that age group very rarely right. gets any preventative health care right. and really doesn't even know that that's an important thing that they need to monitor. Well, tell me this. In community college, for instance, mm -hmm. right after high school, no, that's the mm -hmm. age bracket aspect of it. Right. Anyone wants to go to community college or whatever, do they have any kind of a medical medical checkup or something when they get in, uh, is an entree, none? No, unfortunately not. Gee whiz. So it's just kind of like once they get it, then all of a sudden they got a problem. I often see men the first time they get their first physical, yeah. if if they're lucky at 35, might even be 45. Wow. Wow. That's not huge. uncommon. Hey, but listen to that one. That's a good one. <laughs> okay. What are some of the, some strategies for medications for those 
who are uninsured or underinsured. There's a lot of talk about. Well, the violence. underinsured population is a huge population. They may have only catastrophic health care coverage, mm-hmm. and essentially they may not have prescription coverage, or they may have prescriptions that are not generic, and they may be spending you know four or five hundred dollars a month just to pay for their medications. So some strategies. Um, there's an Oregon prescription assistance program, mm-hmm. which has no qualifying income, mm-hmm. and there are no limits on it. Mm-hmm. It's significant and it decreases 60% on all prescriptions. Wow, gee, that's huge. That's huge. So everyone should be um, getting, it just comes like a card. They can order it from the Oregon Prescription Assistance, um, dot, I think it's dot .org. Okay. Um, there's also, um, if someone is on a drug, it doesn't necessarily need to be a brand name. It mm-hmm. can be a generic medication, mm-hmm. but particularly if someone is on a non-generic medication, they can directly apply to the drug company. Okay. That does have some um, qualifying criteria for income, but it's fairly reasonable. And most people, like, say they're taking um, Cymbalta mm-hmm. or Plavix or one of these really expensive medications. Mm-hmm. They can get it for free from the drug companies. Mm-hmm. And um, there's also... Well, you just ask them uh, for that apply uh, each. Uh, you said, would have to apply to each, each drug company okay. directly. Okay. All of the drug companies have it. And actually, they have it for insulin because a lot of people on Medicare fall in the donut hole. Mm-hmm. This time of year, they don't have uh, all of their prescriptions, their essential prescriptions are not covered, and they're paying for it out of pocket. Out of pocket, and they don't know that. And they don't know that all of the, the companies that make insulin do have free insulin for people who are fall into the donut hole. So even people who are on Medicare or Medicaid who have insufficient coverage for the prescriptions can get assistance. Wow, that's good. Um, they can also go to almost every big pharmacy has discounts. For example, and ask your provider for your prescription in a 90-day supply. Mm -hmm. And usually all of the generic medications are $10 for a 90-day supply. Hmm. So that's significantly less. Mm -hmm. Usually they can find, um, you know, equivalent alternatives that are on that list. Target, Fred Meyer, Walgreens, they all have a list of drugs that are um, essentially nine or ten dollars for a ninety day supply. So just ask your provider to switch you to those. Okay. When you are finding out that you don't have insurance or you're losing a portion of your insurance coverage, mm-hmm. you always want to make an appointment with your provider and get caught up on any immunizations or drug tests or I should say lab tests that need to be done mm-hmm. and ask for a year supply of all of your prescriptions with ninety day and then you know three uh, refills. Mm-hmm. Let your provider know that you are losing insurance mm-hmm. and if they're like me, and I think mm, right, I, I hope right. to, that most providers are like me. If my patient is uninsured, and you know they need a refill on their antidepressant, and they can't afford to visit, I will usually give them refills, mm-hmm. and I would hope that a lot of providers would do the same. Mm-hmm. They may be able to work with the patient to say, well, you do need these labs every year for monitoring for this drug, mm-hmm. but we can get around the full price for a visit. Mm-hmm. The other um, strategy is going to needymeds.com. And I'm not sure how that works. I believe it's like surplus, perhaps from the drug companies, like medications are going to expire within a few months, Mm -hmm. and people can get drugs at a discounted rate. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the other thing, too, is they're thinking about seniors, for instance. um, A lot of times they're not as familiar with, they don't get out of their homes and this, that, and the other. They they don't know where to go. They don't even know how to get on the computer. So many of these resources are on the computer, and they have no clue how to navigate the system. So I would encourage family members. Wouldn't you encourage family members to at least... I relate to these kind right, of situations. Right, right. And that's why I like that dial 211 because yes. that's easy to remember. And even if you don't have a computer, you can do it. Just dial 211. Exactly. And just go right down the way. It has, it's just kind of a directory for all the different social services that we have in the community. Okay, so family members, remember that 211. Remember that now, okay? All right, let's go to another one here. What are the most important things to do to avoid getting cancer? That's huge. It is. It really is. I think more and more people are concerned about it and with good reason. We have Mm -hmm. every day there's something in the newspaper saying, you know, this element or this component of this food or or living in an area near, uh, you know, cell tower, whatever it is, um, is associated with increased risk for cancer. And time and time again, you look at the research and um, it's not so much avoiding getting cancer, it's um, catching it early. The prognosis is so much better when it's caught early on. It's really just incomparable. 
And that's why, you know, it's so important to get a mammogram every year. Mm -hmm. And definitely if you have a family history, um, for example, breast cancer or colon cancer, then those guidelines actually go into effect earlier. Mm. Colon cancer, I'm really on, uh, you know, telling everyone about colonoscopies. This year I had two patients diagnosed with colon cancer. Both of them, it was their first colonoscopy. What age was seen? One was 50. 50, oh. One was 57. Wow, that's young. It's really young. Wow. So 45 if you're African American for a colonoscopy, 50 if you are not, um, but earlier if you have a family history. Hmm. So it's really important to get a colonoscopy. So a young person can actually get a colonoscopy. It, 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 they can. If you have a family history of colon cancer, you right. need to be screened at, at an earlier age. And people always say, oh, they're afraid of it, or yeah. you know, they don't, they're disgusted by it or whatever their mm. excuse is. I can't find someone to drive me. No excuses. People have to get it done. It's really important. And of course, um, I just was reading some um, interesting research mm -hmm. that um, there is this study by um, in the Lancet by um, Chang, and the research showed there was a direct correlation between amount of exercise and decrease in cancer and cardiovascular. Um, disease. Exercise like what? Well, they said if you exercise 300 minutes a week, then mm -hmm. you have decreased risk of cancer by 14 percent. And that's what? Running, walking? Any kind. Anything, it doesn't matter. Movement, movement. Just moving. Heart rate elevated. And then 20% um, decrease in cardiovascular disease. Mm. That's significant. That is significant. And it doesn't have to be a fancy gym membership. It can just be strolling in the neighborhood. But mm -hmm. people need to be getting exercise you know, goal for 300 minutes a week. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just thinking about when I think about saying again, I'm really focused on that whole issue of uh, uh, the, the seniors, if you will. Mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, and uh, you would think that a lot of a, a lot of schools, if you will, mm -hmm. um, or private corporations, mm -hmm. are always trying to do something for seniors, whether mm -hmm. painting the homes and this, mm -hmm. that, and the other. Well, here's an opportunity, if you will, for them to maybe work with seniors, if you will, to get them out of the bed and get them outside and walking right. around with them, this, right. that, and the other. I don't exactly. Know people Handy, ac that. accessible um, paths. It's exactly. really important. Exactly. Yeah. Well, like I say, baby boomers are, is mm -hmm. huge. I mean, they really haven't hit hard yet, but it will be coming very strong. Right. As far as right. It. Okay. Did we go through that one pretty good? Well, I just wanted to mention um, there is definitely a relationship between weight and cancer, particularly some forms of cancer like okay. um, pancreatic and breast cancer. Um, that um, maintaining a healthy weight, if you're overweight, losing weight can help reduce your risk for cancer. And I really can't stress enough how important it is to have a positive attitude. They really have shown with research that people who have better mental attitudes and outlooks mm. are less likely to get cancer. Mm. Really? That's true. That's part of the deal? It is. As opposed to stress? Mind over matter. Really? Exactly. How people deal with stress. Mm -hmm. um, people who laugh more, people who have more social interactions, more social connections, mm -hmm. do have less incidence wow. of cancer. Well, and a lot of times seniors are sort of like cooped up, They're if you isolated. will. They're isolated. I isolated totally. Exactly. Or if not that, you're going through some tough time economic-wise. Right. And those stressors all take a, a role on the immune system. Mm -hmm. And the more stressors you have on the immune system, the less able it is to screen for cancer um, cells. We produce new cancer cells every day. Wow. So if we can um, encourage our immune system to get those, catch those cancer cells before they proliferate, then our, our chances of getting cancer are much reduced. Well, as a lay person, should I ask you about fast food stuff? I mean, what, what impact does that have Don't, That's cancer? a whole other show. We okay. can talk <laughs> a couple hours on Was that. Was that right, really? Oh, wow. Yes. Well, we'll yes. touch bases on it just a little bit. We're going to have to talk a little bit about right. that because people are, are really into the fast food. Taste it is. It, it's it's scary. It's, it's frightening, particularly when um, you look at, I was just at a conference, and I might get the statistic wrong, but mm -hmm. uh, by 2015, 30% of the population will have diabetes. Wow. Wow. And the definition of diabetes? For these oh, folks. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, um, which which type, adult onset or, or juvenile onset? Oh, gee, but, but give me both. Well, primarily adult onset. Juvenile okay. onset is not necessarily a disease from lifestyle. Adult onset, which is happening more and more in kids, um, is really a disease which is a consequence of lifestyle. So what does that mean? What you... Eating too many um, carbs, basically. Too much soda, too much McDonald's, uh, too many pastries. Um, all of those things and, and a sedentary lifestyle um, contribute to diabetes. Jeez, wow. 
That is huge. We can talk a little bit more mm -hmm. about that piece. Okay. I take it we've gone through those, right? Let's see. We're going to take a short break here very shortly. I guess we are. Maybe this might be a, a, an opportune time to do about another five more minutes. Okay, fine. Or we can do, a, do a little about five more minutes. Okay, let's touch a little bit more on the... Um, uh, this how can I avoid getting sick? That's another major. That's a whole bunch of litmus. Right. That. Well, the number one thing is hand washing. Hand washing. Can't stress that enough. It really is uh, just basic hand washing. Um, and some people really need to wash their hands more frequently. If you're a student or a teacher, or if you work in a, a public um, domain, then you need to be washing your hands more often. Um, but essentially, mm -hmm. hand washing is the best way to prevent transmission of disease. Mm -hmm. Not to make everyone neurotic, yeah. but you know, <laughs> if you <laughs> shake someone's hand or, or go to the bathroom yeah, yeah. or eat or any of those situations, or if you cough, then you should be yeah. washing your hands. So that's the most important thing. To hand washing. Hand washing. What Very simple. Well, yeah, but gee whiz, I mean, imagine all the, the various incidents, you know, going into a door, opening the door. Right. What do you do? <laughs> After you open the door, you're going to have to and, wash your hands. And that's why I don't want you to become neurotic, <laughs> but, you know, just think about it more. Gee, gee. So that's the most important thing. Um, and getting a flu shot. Even the though flu the shot. flu shot... Everyone says, you know, you still. I, I still got sick when I had the flu. I, mm -hmm. I got the flu shot. You can get a different strain, um, even if you get immunized. You can get a different type of a cold, a different flu virus. The flu vaccine only protects you for one, but one is better than none. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's ever had the flu, they would encourage you to get a flu shot because just that chance that you're going to avoid that one strain is worth getting mm -hmm. the shot. Um, it's only good for a year, unfortunately. Only for a year. Only good for a year. And some people just don't want to take a flu shot. They say, look, I just don't believe in it. That's fine. I don't push it except for people who are either kids or have asthma or diabetes or elderly or anyone who, has, who is frail. Okay. Um, any chronic health conditions. So a large group of the population really, or if they're a teacher or work in healthcare. Yeah. Uh, but a large portion of um, the population can get by and be okay. But most people either have kids or are interacting with kids or have a situation which would warrant it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then a lot of people are eligible for a pneumonia vaccine, mm. which only protects you from one strain of one pneumonia, but it's still better than And what nothing. age group is that? Well, if you have asthma or diabetes, you can get it. Um, or essentially, um, you know, when you're 60 or 65, depending mm -hmm. upon um, your insurance coverage, then you can have Is that an annual shot? No, no, no. Every five to seven Every years. To it seven depends years. on risk factors. If you have emphysema, a smoker, all of these things would justify doing it younger. Mm -hmm. You know, I, at the same time as we're going through this, people don't talk about this. That's true. You know, we don't talk about health issues at right. all. In fact, uh, as you get older, you just sort of sit back and just wait for it to come. <laughs> wait for somebody to call you up right. and say, hey, here we go. Right. But, but on the other hand, if you, it, but I say if you talk about it, it's almost like preventive maintenance, right? Right. You can live longer, right? Well, I think so. I mean, if you just think about someone may have a symptom that they think is maybe unusual, but they don't know if it's concerning. They talk with their friends, they mention the symptom, and maybe the friend would say, wow, my cousin had that symptom and it was breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, that's that's not normal. Maybe you should see your, your doctor. Mm -hmm. So unless you're able to be open about your health and talk freely about people, who's to know? Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, when I see young people and they come in and they have no idea what their family history is, that's mm -hmm. just sad. Mm -hmm. We really need to open up conversations between generations as mm -hmm. far as uh, what is the family history so why aren't people we doing can be more, informed. Why aren't we doing more of that? Look like it would help, if you will, well, about you know, part, educating people as a whole. Part of it is the silent generation. The elderly population, they're called the silent generation because they're very stoic and they don't talk about that. They don't talk about problems. So it's you have to draw out those uh, your family members who mm -hmm. are from the silent generation, and usually once you you know explain why it's so important, they're they're free to talk about it. But they mm -hmm. it's almost like they need permission to talk. Mm -hmm. They're not going to volunteer information. No, I noticed that for sure. You have to well, start the discussion. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to see if we can take a take a short break at this point in time, and uh, we'll be back with Leslie to get a little bit more background, if you will, on the whole issue of. Uh, issues that we are very familiar with, okay? Medical issues. We'll be right back. All right, hold it. Okay. Going good. 
You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Okay, look like we are back again. Uh, we're talking about uh, issues from a medical attention and things that we need to know of, if you will. And Leslie has done this on an annual basis. And she's here back with us today and talking about uh, uh, issues that we should be concerned with, uh, issues that we, we don't want to talk about. We just don't want to talk about them. And it's very important. And for those of you who, are, who have uh, moms and dads who are in their senior ages, if you will, and, and not that familiar with what to do and where to go and this, that, and the other, you, sh you should also be aware and not only be aware for your own self, but also for mom and dad, if you will, because a lot of times, you know, they, they, they hesitate about going to seeking out medical attentions on anything for that matter. So along with that, hey, let's get right back in this thing, Leslie. And we were, let's see, we were uh, still talking about how can I avoid getting sick. Anything? That's right. Yeah, let's we see. talked about flu shot right. and then pneumonia shot right. if you're eligible. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, it's very important to get eight hours of sleep at night. Make it a goal. You may only end up with like seven and a half or seven, but eight hours of sleep. Eight hours of sleep. It's essentially when your immune system is working. Mm -hmm. So people who are sleep deprived are much more likely to get sick. Mm -hmm. Not just sick, but even with cancer. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really important to get quality sleep. And uh, if you have sleep apnea, it's really important to treat that. If you have a sleep disorder, it's important to get quality sleep in order to um, improve your immune system. Well, you know, and I'm not talking about myself particularly, but uh, but the bottom line is that a lot of the TV pieces it plays mm -hmm. quite a role, if you will, mm -hmm. with seniors for that matter. They look at their favorite show and a lot of times it's late. Right. And this, that, and the other. So any anything along that line? It's the worst thing to do. It is, huh? It is. It really Take is. The TV. People who have insomnia or sleeping problems should not have the TV in the bedroom, should in not bedroom. have it on. Even the light mm -hmm. from the TV, even if you have the volume down, can disrupt your sleep. Wow. And that, that is an issue, by the way. It is. Because the bottom line, from a senior standpoint, even from a family member standpoint, what you is a mom, mom and dad can just go, go to bed, if you will, and not have to worry about it. They can just put the TV on right. and, and let them sit there. But it's not quality sleep. And it's that's not quality what's sleep, and the, and the importance of an eight hour. Eight hours. Eight hours. Eight. Make that a goal. What's the importance? What was the rationale? Why? Well, when you're sleeping is when you uh, release human growth hormone, and that's kind of when you're rebuilding damaged cells. Okay. And um, even as you get older. Oh yes. Okay. But that's why kids sleep so much. Ah. Because they need more time where they're releasing their growth hormone. So okay. babies just sleep constantly because they're, you know, releasing a lot of that. But then seniors need the same amount of sleep, but a lot of times they cut short. What happens if you cut short? What if, if all of a sudden you, you're sleeping about three or four hours a day? Oh, well, it can what affect your mood. Like and your, you know, your people, okay. concentration, irritability, mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. anxiety. You're just your emotional reserves, your ability to cope with stressors is much reduced. Mm -hmm. And I talk to people about sleeping problems a lot. Mm. But particularly with people who have stress. Mm. That can be what really gets the expense of trying to do 101 things every day mm -hmm. is you sleep less. Mm. So that's to get the old grumpy old man and grumpy old lady. <laughs> well, not necessarily all old. In. All ages people all can ages. have pumps of sleeping. Ah. Right. So it's important to start this as a, you know, establish a good bedtime routine mm. even with kids. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, a well-balanced, healthy diet. Right. So... There's a lot of uh, research and studies about antioxidants or these power foods like mm -hmm. blueberries mm -hmm. and pomegranates and all these things. And essentially they all are good, but uh, you really want to have uh, at least five servings of vegetables that are nutrient rich. 
I don't really count iceberg lettuce as okay. nutrient rich. Okay. Well, like so carrots, carrots beans. colorful carrots, oh. sweet potatoes, beans, beans greens. Um, exactly, dark green, okay. leafy vegetables. Collard, that exactly, type of stuff. broccoli. Okay. All of those are very nutrient rich. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most people who are either uh, have less income uh, or trying to make their budget. Uh, encompass all yeah. of their prescriptions right. often can't afford those yeah. healthy canned fresh. vegetables can you do it it's better than nothing okay. better than nothing okay. it's better than nothing it's not okay. as good as fresh a lot of times you can you pick them up you lose a lot of those yeah. phytonutrients mm -hmm. when you cook things mm -hmm. Hmm. interesting hmm. and uh, a lot of people who are trying to improve their immune system um, may take a multivitamin uh, I would really strongly encourage you to look at your multivitamin. They are very, the percent RDA, which is recommended daily allowance, is highly variable. You want to be sure that there's enough selenium and zinc. Both of those are associated with um, helping your immune system. Mm -hmm. Now, these, these vitamins, multivitamin aspect, I, I read an article where it said something about the fact that, well, you, sometimes you can take too many, too you many can. vitamins of some sort. You can. Right, those pills, yeah. right? Because in all due respect, they say they, it's, it's always in the foods, in some of the foods that you Right, eat. a lot of foods are, are supplemented, enriched with vitamins. Right. Okay. It's true, you can have, most vitamins are water soluble, but if you have impaired kidney or liver function, you may not have the ability to clear those from your system. Mm -hmm. So definitely anyone who does have kidney or liver disease needs to be discussing with their medical provider, are these doses, you don't wanna just ask, can I take vitamin E? You mm -hmm. need to have the dose that you're taking mm -hmm. to see if it's appropriate or safe. And if you are taking supplements that brings back to the annual exam with annual um, checks on your, your kidney and liver function, mm -hmm. anyone who's really over 40 should be getting annual lab work to be sure that their kidney and liver function is, is healthy. You know, another point in regards to vitamins and just taking pills mm -hmm. for that matter, that's a big push from a media standpoint, advertising and whatever in terms of, well, hey, if this ails you, get a pill. Get it's a this huge pill. industry and it's not, it's not regulated and that's part of the, no. these uh, recent articles that have been examining supplements and, you know, they not all are created equally. And as far as they aren't required to, you know, they may purport that they have 400% of vitamin E, but then when it's actually analyzed, it may not, it may be higher or lower. Mm -hmm. So that's what's really getting called into question is the quality of these supplements. Mm -hmm. And some people just take, frankly, too many. Mm -hmm. They, If they have a well-balanced diet, they don't necessarily need to be taking all these additional supplements. You know, I was going, the other thing I was gonna share is that, it, it, because it is an issue, uh, again, I'm thinking about uh, the, the, the baby boomers and this, that, and the other, mm -hmm. but the whole issue of of sex, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and, and thinking about the pills, you know, and all of a sudden you see all kinds of advertisements about the fact, wait, well, hey, take this pill, right. and take this pill, right. take this pill, and, and uh, but then at the same time, the small print, i.e., uh, you may have problems with the eyes, or right. this, that, and the other, I guess one can overindulge themselves along that line, right? It's all about blood pressure, blood essentially, pressure. and that's what worries me. I know you can get them, you know, Viagra online, yeah, right. but the problem is, Someone who has erectile dysfunction may it may be a sign of something much more serious, mm -hmm. and unless they get evaluated and determine what the cause is for their erectile dysfunction, if they just take a pill that you know takes care of the symptom. They may be hiding or masking something much more serious, mm -hmm. or conversely, they could have a problem that's very treatable and doesn't require mm -hmm. Viagra. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think anyone who has um, erectile dysfunction or even women who are having right. sexual Same complaints sense, yeah. really should be seen and evaluated because they have could have something that's very treatable. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I think about all the other things you were talking about before, you know, sleeping regularly mm -hmm. and and exercising mm -hmm. and eating healthy and mm -hmm. things of that nature. It all all has an impact. And that blood pressure is like anything else, you know. Right. It's blood flow. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right, let's see, how can I effectively lose weight? Now that's another big issue, you know it what I mean? Is. With all of the fast foods that are running around mm -hmm. here, you know, I gotta have that Big Mac, you know, at least one a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, it's Tom, unlikely Tom, you're gonna Tom, in fact, lose my, weight. The guy behind the camera right now, look at him, he's already smiling, he wants two Burger Kings. Okay. He, he gets, <laughs> well, no, let's talk about that. Well, uh, I would call that a really <laughs> nutrient dense food. Is that what it is? It is. You because get that, Tom? It's nutrient dense. You <laughs> want to avoid nutrient dense foods. Okay. Those are foods that are packed with disproportionate amounts of calorie and fat and sodium and, and sugar. 
So essentially, everything that you get from McDonald's, yeah, yeah. although they're making efforts, you yeah, know, they to yeah. have their sliced apples instead of, of fries for the kitty mills, and I, I think that's good. But essentially, um, to lose weight, the, one of the most important things is everyone should have a breakfast that includes protein. So mm-hmm. a lot of people shirk or skip breakfast, and if they do have breakfast, they have essentially a meal that's just all carbs like cereal Mm -hmm. or oatmeal. So it can be more of a challenge, but you want to have protein for breakfast. Meat. Meat or scrambled eggs or Greek yogurt or all of those things have protein. They have protein bars, Mm -hmm. but essentially you want to start off the day right with some long lasting calories. Mm -hmm. And avoid sugar. I bet anyone who cut out sugar and high fructose corn syrup would lose weight. Mm -hmm. As long as they, you know, showed some prudence and moderation with their portion sizes. Mm -hmm. That essentially cuts out um, all soda, uh, you know, all of the flavored yogurts and, mm. and packaged foods and all of the nutrient dense foods that we really should be avoiding have either sugar or high fructose corn syrup. Um, and um, having five small meals. A lot of people, they just starve themselves. And then by the time it gets to be mealtime, they're just ravenous and mm-hmm. they'll eat everything in sight and not necessarily make good food choices. Mm-hmm. So having two small snacks that do a protein and then smaller meal uh, portions and trying to eat a lot of vegetables. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, those are the, um, the foods that fill you up but don't have a lot of calories. Mm-hmm. And that's basic. You know, you just... Basic. <laughs> uh, one of the doctors I work with, his his diet, he tells people, if it tastes good, don't eat it. Uh, boy, I tell you, in the out in that market, you know, those, those, those fast food situations, it's all about tasting good. Right, and they add and sugar and fries, salt and fries. fat to make it taste better. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I think you, can, you shouldn't completely feel like you're um, deprived but maybe make it an occasional treat. And maybe instead of having a whole uh, chocolate pie, just have a bite okay. or one piece of chocolate. I know a friend of mine, he's probably looking at this, and his name is Chad, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A bite to him is the whole pie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to him about that later at one point in time. Okay, any other thing we might want to add? What well, about the drinking a lot of water? And well, stuff? that does help. It fills you up. A lot of times, we have a really bad um, thirst reception in our brain. Okay. So a lot of times when we think we're hungry, we're actually just thirsty. So if you're hungry, drink a big glass of water. It fills okay. you up. And maybe that's all you were in the first place. You weren't even hungry. Mm-hmm. So obviously water, not soda or artificial, artificial oh, sweeteners. Mm-hmm. What about eating uh, late late hours, if you will? Uh, what about that part? Go straight I mean, to you the thighs. Looking at TV, I mean, you, you got to have some popcorn nope. or something, huh? Well, popcorn, popcorn is, is you know in moderation. Bad. It's it's better than potato chips. Well, a bag chips. of popcorn, maybe or something. Well, ideally, you would you make it yourself <laughs> with less I'm fat. To give me the okay. <laughs> got a phone call. Got a phone call. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, we're gonna put the phone on. Okay, we're we're about we're about done almost, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're about done almost. Yeah. We'll take some of your calls, by the way, and if you want to call and ask, um, ask Leslie a question or two or whatever, you, hey, she's, she's here for you. Okay, but again, like I said, this late eating is big mm-hmm. time stuff. You know, a lot of times right. people looking at TV late right. or whatever. Well, snack and on some carrots or carrots, snap okay. peas. There you That's go. satisfying. It's crunchy. But, you know, some people just, or she wants some gum, something okay. to keep your mouth busy. Oh, but. okay. But the mindset, you know, but they're constantly throwing commercials out there, too. I know. <laughs> that's another, that's mm-hmm. another issue, right? Okay. Lots of water and no soda. Okay, you went through mm-hmm. that piece. Was there anything else, anything else that we, we think we, we might have not have caught? Might have talked about. Well, I think the main thing I really wanted to get out that information about those resources for patients who yes. are uninsured or underinsured because I, I feel like a lot of people don't realize they're uh, out there. They are out there and they're free. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you wouldn't have to be embarrassed, if you will, by giving them a call, right? Right. As, as part of right. the supplement aspect of it. Right. And uh, what would be if there was one place to call to get that information? I think you, you said that once before. 211. 211, that's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Not nine nine one one, but two one one. Two one one. Or two one one. Mm-hmm. And that there will be a person on the other end of the line. I'm not sure if it's an actual. I, I think it's probably an automated system. Eventually, you could get to a uh, actual person. Okay. Now, what, now sometimes isn't there another number for a nurse if you want just just wanted to talk about some. Well, what unfortunately, no, not really. Um, most insurance plans do have a nurse line. They do have a But nurse I don't think there's actually like a nurse advice line for someone without insurance. There should yeah. be. Okay. There really should be. 
What about what about uh, a, a book or something, uh, something that one can access at the library or something like that in terms well, of so various symptoms, if you will. Have you have you seen anything like that? Well, you know, it's it's always interesting. People go to um, web WebMD okay. and they come in and they they uh, yeah, they're, 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 they have diagnosed what their problem is by looking at their symptoms. They're terrified. They think they have a brain tumor because they have these various. Uh, so they're telling you what to do. Well, no, I I, I go <laughs> huh? along with it because okay, okay. You know, I really you think it's important. It. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly, yeah. and I think it's important to really figure out what someone's fears are. What do mm-hmm. they need? Mm-hmm. It may not be that they need um, anything. They may mm-hmm. not need a prescription, but they need validation of their symptoms and what they're going through. Mm-hmm. And I think you know, and that goes back to the whole comment about having more discussions with people, being more open about your health. Mm -hmm. If you have a chronic disease, that might be the thing you want more than anything, Mm -hmm. is an opportunity to talk to someone without having judgment. And it could be a family member. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I feel like a lot of people want to talk about their health concerns and, you know, they don't necessarily have an avenue to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, again, we're talking to uh, Leslie Cody. Uh, She's an FNP. uh, Family nurse practitioner, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, and uh, in the bottom line, we're just talking about health issues and health. You can give us a call if you want to get into the conversation. If you got something to add, or if you got something to help us out, mm-hmm. I mean, let's exactly. just say she's open. You know, and in fact, let's talk about some of these um, over-the-counter remedies. If you sure. will, let's talk sure. a little bit about that. We well, about there the are actually time. some very effective ones, um, herbs that um, have been around forever and used for various purposes. Sa palmetto is we. Talk talked about prostate earlier mm-hmm. that is actually really effective for prostate symptoms okay uh, black cohosh is actually really good for hot flashes oh. it doesn't necessarily treat the other symptoms associated with uh, mm-hmm. menopause you got a call it, is that what you're saying oh we got a call we got a call okay. let's see we got a call a call you on the air your question or comment please hi uh, I see this show and I actually have a question just take your time take your time Okay. Well, anyway, call back. You can call back and just take your time. Put your thoughts together. We'll be here. we got a few more minutes here to do this, okay? All right. We're so, over the counter. Right. Stuff. Remedies for various common complaints. Uh, black coash is very effective for uh, hot flashes. Not so much the other symptoms associated with menopause, but a lot of... And, and hot flashes, like? Going, when women are going through women. menopause. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, it's very effective. It doesn't necessarily treat the other symptoms with menopause, but you know, taken every six hours, it can be pretty effective. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people that take St. John's Wort for their mood, which you know, it, it can actually be uh, like fairly mood, effective. Like it? It, it can. However, uh, that brings me to the point that these herbs are just as uh, potent as a medication. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you really need to tell your medical mm-hmm. provider you're taking them okay. so that they can be aware of any interactions that may occur from prescription medications. Okay, good. Look like we got another caller. Caller, you on the air, your question or comment. Take your time and your question, please. All contribution. Uh, yes, uh, you know, over time you've had uh, plenty of uh, discussion of this is good for you, and that's good for you. Right. And all of a sudden, there's been some conflicting things come mm-hmm. along saying, okay. um, this may be not good for you, or this is not good for you. So mm-hmm. how, do, how does a citizen um, keep things straight on on the latest, uh, what is good for you and what is not good for you? Good. Thank you, Carla. Good question. That's a great question. Yes. Because there's essentially research that can refute or support any position. Mm. So really, um, as an informed citizen, looking at, they may say this research recently says that vitamin E actually causes prostate cancer. Mm-hmm. Well, what is the population size of the, the sample in the research? Mm-hmm. Is it 24 people? Well, that's not very significant. Is it, you know, 150,000 people? That's actually much more significant. So I wouldn't necessarily be alarmed at one study here or there if it's a very small population size, but if it's a large uh, population and if it's um, several um, studies that support the same thing, then there's definitely more cause to believe that. So who regulates this stuff? Is CDC or something? Well, that's exactly the problem with supplements because it's not. It's regulated. not regulated at all. Exactly, 
Exactly. Jeez, That's yeah. the whole problem. So various companies can, you, you know, you go to the store and you look at seven different brands for a saw palmetto and you could analyze them and they'd all be different as far as the um, percentage that they actually have of active ingredient. So you really are, and it's not necessarily related to price. Mm -hmm. So um, buying from a reputable company is, is really important when it comes to supplements. So who do you call? I mean, if you well, you can the better better business bureau will have some information if there been complaints against different mm -hmm. supplements. Mm -hmm. um, but then they're they're just uh, you know you can go to a supplement store and obviously someone who works there and that's all they're doing is supplements will know fairly well what are the brands that are going to be more reputable. Mm -hmm. Anything else on it as far as the over-the-counter stuff? Oh, for might? supplements? Yeah, supplements. Well, um, you know, I really think that pretty much everyone should, um, if you have joint or risk for heart disease, joint problems, mood problems, even skin, um, you should do fish oil. So we really, n n rarely do we get enough fish in our diet, so almost everyone could benefit from taking some mm -hmm. fish oil. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you don't have a very well-balanced balanced diet, then doing a multivitamin. And uh, if you live in the Northwest and get less than four hours of sunlight a day, you should mm -hmm. take additional vitamin D. Gee, yeah. The recommendation it used to be 400 units um, per adult, and now they've increased that to 1,000 mm -hmm. for places in the rest of the country. 2,000 in the Northwest. African Americans actually um, have some of the lowest vitamin D levels I've ever seen. Really? And part of it is just um, with dark, the darker your skin, the less uh, mm. able you are to absorb it from the mm. sun. Mm. So most people are really conscientious about their sun exposure, so most people should do additional D. Mm. Mm. You know, there's the other thing I notice is there are, when you go to the stores, the large stores or whatever, there's always a, some advertisement about shingles and things of that nature. Yes. Are we have an epidemic I'm now? Glad, I'm glad deal? you brought that it's up. Yes. Well, um, at 60, your insurance covers it, or 65. At 60 or 65, okay. Right, so if you have, a, say, just a regular insurance And what are the 60, symptoms of that? Yeah, let's talk about it. What, what, is, what are shingles? What is well, that? shingles, um, anyone who's had chicken pox. Chicken pox, okay. Mm -hmm, can get shingles at any time in their life. Hmm. But usually it happens um, later in life, and often there's a stressor again linking the whole connection between your immune system and stressors. Uh -huh. So when people are undergoing a lot of stress, they're susceptible to getting shingles. Hmm. And it starts as a rash that's on only one side of the body, and it's one part of your body. It could be uh, your back up to your chest only on one side, or it could be on your leg, only one leg, and usually they're, um, it starts feeling painful before there's even a rash, and then uh, blisters, sometimes with a little bit of a reddish background. And um, as soon as you get those symptoms, you need to be seen right away. Mm -hmm. Because the sooner you get on antiviral medications, the shorter your problem will be with the shingles. Mm -hmm. But shingles can be excruciating and debilitating and can really cause people to miss work and just be essentially miserable. Can, you, can it be cured if you catch it on early? Well, it just shortens the duration of how long you have it. I There's see. no cure. So the shingles vaccine, mm -hmm. um, Zostravax, mm -hmm. when you're 60, uh, your insurance covers it, and at 65, Medicare covers it. And it's a $300 um, shot if you don't have insurance coverage. Wow, 300, what, how much I that? think it's like 298 or something. I mean, it's that's almost 300, $300. That's 300 dollars. Right. For one shot. It is. So try to get it through your insurance. So insurance picks up the Right, a lot of people miss that time frame. Mm -hmm. And, um, but most, I think insurance companies are getting better about covering it. Mm -hmm. So when so I guess the other thing we want people we want people to run out there now just getting it just say well I'll just get it anyway to prevent it you know unless you get the symptoms right you should go and get the shot no 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 it's too late it's too late once you get the <laughs> shot it's too late you already have it so get the shot so you never get it and um, if you have those symptoms get treated right away okay so get the shot if you don't have it right. Even if annual? you have had shingles, get the shot. That's an annual type. No, thing? once you've just a one shot it deal. Sports. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you're a senior and you don't have it, get, get the it. shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you're done. Right. Oh, good. That's interesting. Okay, fine. All right. Let's see. What are some other goodies that I was thinking about? Um, uh, we talked about what about this acupuncture? Acupuncture. Is that acupuncture. Thing? I'm referring more and more that. patients to have that done. Um, actually, why so? Well, it's just amazing. Some of the things that really just the Western medical model really doesn't have a lot of treatment um, options. Um, 
acupuncture can either cure it or manage symptoms. I have one patient who has awful um, menstrual cycles every month, Mm -hmm. and acupuncture has made it bad enough that she had anemia, but acupuncture has made it to the point where she barely has any complaints. I just saw uh, an elderly woman for her annual physical, Mm -hmm. and she's mid-80s, and she just, you know, has been doing acupuncture a couple times a month, and she's spry, has more energy than ever. Mm -hmm. She can't, you know, um, she really attributes it to acupuncture. Uh, so headaches, muscle spasms, irritable bowel syndrome, bad cycles, uh, just a whole variety really? of complaints uh, that really is very well treated. So what do you Google, Google to get some ideas of what is what all the other areas that are involved in acupuncture? Well, um, most of the, um, you know, there's pretty much an acupuncture cure for everything. Okay. And it may only be a temporary cure, but it mm-hmm. can help. Mm-hmm. So seeing an acupuncturist Um, is not a bad idea, particularly if you are frustrated because you've seen a medical doctor and have been left with no solutions to your problem. You may find that acupuncture is a good solution for you. And more and more insurance companies are covering it. They are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other goodies that we might be able to share with you? And by the way, give us a call, by the way. Anything on your mind, give us a call in regards to health issues like uh, medical or whatever, whatever you're thinking about. Maybe some things have come down on you they're not familiar with. You know, well, hey, here's Leslie, and she'll at least direct you one way or the other in the right direction, okay? Any other goodies you think we might be in? I'm thinking about what about um, a lot of times people get to the point now they're vacationing and this, that, and the other, sitting around the pool and whatever, and their toes are sort of like having problems there. Toe fungus? Toe fungus. When they, whoever. That's a big issue now. Whoever comes up with the cure for that will be a billionaire. But they I, say that. But 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 if you go down to the drugstore, this that and the other, they always say they have the cure. There's about five or six different items just lined up. What's the deal? Well, honestly, probably yeah. any one of those remedies would help, but it has to be done consistently until the nail completely grows out all signs of the fungus. Mm-hmm. So the problem is people start, they do whatever the treatment is. Uh, it's usually twice a day, mm-hmm. and then they would stop doing it. So it. Quick, quick. Was that real quick? Quick call. Oh, got a quick okay. call. Okay, good. Call you on the air, real, real quick, lad. Call you on the air. Your question or comment, please. Oh, hi. Right. Thank you for taking my call. It's a great show you're putting on. Thank you. I was wondering if uh, you could develop psoriasis later in life. Oh, okay. Good, good call. Yes. Good. Yes. Uh, it's. Thank you, Carla. It can happen at any time. Okay. Psoriasis. Mm-hmm. And, and what age factor? Well, there isn't necessarily an age factor. Okay. It can happen at any time. It's any a time. dry, scaly, um, sometimes painful rash and it's chronic, and it can be treated um, through medical treatment. Um, so it, it's not necessarily that it only is found in young kids. It can happen across the age spectrum. Is it noticed earlier? I mean, uh, Not necessarily. I mean, was it a small patch? What, what, what part of the any, body? It could be any part of the body. Any part of the body. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this one would uh, just contact your, your doctor? Right, right. It, all it takes is an exam to get the um, diagnosis confirmed, mm-hmm. and there are lots of different treatment options. Mm-hmm. And they can go to probably one of those uh, those areas that you talked about, whether community health clinics or community county clinics. Community health clinics. The county clinics, I, you know, I really think the county clinics are somewhat under Utilized. Is that right? I think they're a resource that are, you know, it's a good starting point for a lot of things. Okay. okay. Well, look, hey, we, we run out of time, but this has been great. It has been. As, as usual, you did a good job. Thank and you. we're going to probably have you on again next year, great. if not sooner. Great. Okay, good. And we want to thank Leslie for being with us over here on the Oregon Voters Digest. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And as George Page always said, back to what you believe in. Take care of yourself, by the way. Get eight hours of sleep, Chad. Take care.